<laughs> no, because listen, okay, in Ramadan, you have to find like something safe to watch. Yes. Right? And that's And so in general, there's so few shows or things that you could watch that like you know is like not going to mess not going to not going to mess with your dean and like low key the Sufis love Naruto. Like it's a very like Oh, bro, Naruto got me through a thousand percent. Oh, he says what is he just says, "I'll never give up. I uh, that's my ninja way." Yeah. Bro, <clears throat> what kind of a, I I promise you he was a Muslim. By the way, I wanted to say, mashallah with um, Mustafa Briggs, bro, you got a lot of content. Yeah. And there, it, it's doing good. Yeah, mashallah. It's doing really. Man, that brother got a gift. Yeah. Shabu. Mashallah, tabarakallah. You know what I like about him? He understands the concept of the podcast, and he uses it to his advantage. Mm. So, you know, when he came, when he first came to Dallas, was it two years ago? Um, I followed him around, and I just, I did all his, I did, like, basically all his photography. So, I watched, like, seven lectures that he did. Five, no, stuff a lot. Five lectures. And what I appreciated was even though some of the stories were the same, he presented it appropriately for every single context. He doesn't, he doesn't, he, he says things in a neutral, you know, tone yeah. where he'll tell you like racist things that happen. He's not getting mad though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a, his, he has a historical view of mm. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. let me give you guys a formal intro here because so that people can know. Right. I'm an Ali yeah. and Khaled Noor Hussain. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast. No, no, Thank you for having us. You know, you know I, I, I strive to have the cultural like impact that um, Soheb Web, Imam Soheb Web had when he was like, how's business? Booming. Mm. Forever. <laughs> Till now, people still say that. You, you think that's him? You're giving him credit for that? Is that DJ Khaled? Is it? Pretty sure it is. Though. I don't want to give him credit for okay. nothing, bro. Nah, nah, oh, we're right. not rocking with it. No. Nah. Damn, so, okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> you saw that one video of the... His cousin? No, it was like a non-Muslim African-American. And he was like calling out DJ Khaled about not talking about Palestine. Mm. And instead being carried. You saw that when he had two of his bodyguards carry him so he doesn't crease his J's. Was it that same video? What do you mean that? I know it happened before. People were like, oh, like he didn't exactly. I know about the caring, but I didn't know that someone called him out. Yeah. Oh. And that, I mean, he did that video mm. when what's happening in Palestine is happening. Like, subhanAllah, bro. Like, as, as your people are being bombed for months, the only video you're dropping is of your bodyguards carrying you so you don't mm. increase your J's. How do you guys feel three days into Ramadan so far? How's it been going so far? Alhamdulillah, you know what's crazy? We just had this conversation right before. I was telling a few of our friends, we had a iftar yesterday, that like the night before, the two nights before, like we were hanging out with our friends and we were like, this Ramadan, it's like, when it was like the next day, we were excited, but we were also like scared, nervous, right? Oh, bro, I, w- I'm, I was not excited. Stuff a lot of I was terrified. Why? I think that it's, been, it's just been a long year. And I think that uh, especially like, as the whole ummah gets like better and better at being Muslim, like I feel like we're alhamdulillah. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of people who are like influencers, and the shiuk are a lot more active. Um, there's just more of them, and so like coming up, I was nervous. I was nervous. I'm like, am I gonna be able to, you know, am I gonna do well this Ramadan? Like, you get into this mindset of like, because we're really consumed with like productivity culture and metrics, and like, yeah. how like, how am I gonna perform this Ramadan? Perform, yes. And I'm like, and then the that literally like right before that maghrib, like I'm like I'm like nervous. I'm like consumed with like worry and fear. I took a little bit of a walk um, to kind of like calm my head down, whatever. And then like I prayed maghrib and sukun, just peace, bro. And I was like, okay, all this like waswasa nonsense took me away from the fact that Ramadan is not about all of that. Ramadan is about just reconnecting. Mm. It's personal. Allah, yeah, Allah set it up, man. Allah kicked out the shaitan, made fasting easy. It's, it's a lot of it's just built in, and so like, as soon as the as soon as Ramadan came in, I was like, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. If I just have one sincere moment with Allah, this whole Ramadan, that might be enough for me to get forgiven, and that's really the only point. Mm. Like, obviously, we increase our worship. We we you know we want to get closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We want to do better and we want to grow. But like, if I get forgiven, like that's enough. Yeah. And thirty days. One of the good scariest of time. things that I learned is that your perf- or how you do or your relationship with Ramad- uh, Allah during Ramadan determines your year. Yeah. Mm. And A I thousand f- percent. Yeah. I found that to be very true in my life. Honestly. You know, it's, it's, it's very true. Yeah. You know what's scary? Like, I think I was just thinking about it today. I was like, 
you know when you're praying stuff and you just like lose focus right you're like damn is this the baswasa from shaitan yeah. but reality is is when allah takes shaitan out of the picture it's like your 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 like shortcomings yes right it, that's yeah. the scary part i was like well it was was it me this whole time <laughs> and that's what scared me and i was like well like allah is giving us the opportunity to show okay these are your faults like how can you get better at them and it's scary i mean of course what's going on in the world like every single ramadan is like we always hear it but like alhamdulillah allah has given me experience where you know there's like this could be your last Ramadan. like alhamdulillah we're, we're hearing this in your next Ramadan. Yeah. Or we're able to all uh, allow us to reach Ramadan. I remember COVID year. Uh, this is a very personal story. COVID year, one of my closest friends, like family friends, um, he caught COVID. That's wrong. And then back then we didn't know. You just send him to the hospital. And then, you know, he was in the catheter, you know, you know, the respiratory, everything. And then he got infected. And then he got and he passed away and he just got married that in, uh, that January. Oh. Right? He got married in January, came back, got sick. He got actually got sick on his way back from from uh from from Bangladesh. No, he doesn't. Oh. So like every single time I'm like, Alhamdulillah, I'm here. Like Allah is giving me another Ramadan. Yeah. But he didn't give it to him. Like the last text I got from him, he's like, If I don't make it, just know that I love you and I want the best for you. Just make dua for me. And Allah, like I read that text. That was his last text to me, and man. and what hurts the most was that I didn't ignore it. I was like, "Dude, you're gonna be fine." I was like, "It's just a thing." I got on the phone. It's gonna be fine. Don't don't overthink it. That was our last conversation. Oh, and he was close to you. Very close, like fam, like grew up together. He was a little older than us. Him and his family, and um, every single time Ramadan comes up, it always reminds me like Allah allowed me to come to this Ramadan yeah. and how can I make the both so that's why I was kind of nervous I was like exactly like, with so much going on we didn't have time to prepare but mm-hmm. reality the fact is like do we always do we have I feel like having time to prepare is a luxury it is right a thousand percent like no one like to be honest like you see we we're talking I think the conversation we started with was the influencer culture yeah and how that goes like oh people are like oh getting ready for ramadan a lot of people are coming to dallas for ramadan yeah you right? get like this like idealized version that's like you know it's cut perfectly and you know everybody looks beautiful and perfect mm-hmm. and like everything go- just falls into place and that's not really real life it's mm-hmm. romanticizing it mm-hmm. yeah people have like alhamdulillah i think we talked about it i've talked about it people have before. romanticized the religion though yeah and that's not necessarily a bad thing yeah. no but you don't confuse that with reality it's a story and stories are things that we can uh, learn from. We can take lessons from. Uh, but Be motivated. A thousand percent. But we don't take it as real life. And it's not. It's definitely not. So what was the conversation you guys were having about that? It, you know, it's so funny. It's just our group of friends, alhamdulillah, like we've uh, we found a group that's like similar minded. And we're all like, we're there, alhamdulillah. We're like community organizers. We've Most been in the one. community. Allah has blessed us with these people. And like, it was just that late night conversation yeah. that turned into, you know, what do we do with what we have, right? Yeah. And then we, we, you know, everybody's like, oh, like, I think, you know, Vela just dropped, the, Vela and Nominal just dropped <laughs> their thing, right? And then we were talking about that. And then yeah. that turned into this influencer culture, you yeah. know, and how people, like, how do we take it? Like, how do we ingest it? Right, yeah. and then I think the end of the conversation is is like it's, with anything, you take the good and leave the bad. Yeah, yeah there's gonna be some people that's gonna be mad about it. It's like, oh, it's not, you know, you know, what is it, rainbows and daisies? Yeah. Right. But alhamdulillah, people, if if your video or your conversation, like Khalid has his things, like he's gonna converse with anyone, right? And he's like, he's like, no matter how much, he's gonna give him a minute, he's gonna give him five hours, right? He's gonna converse with them because he's, he's what lasting impact he's gonna have, right? And that's such a beautiful thing. It's like in the end of the day, no matter what you do, if you have a sincere intention, Allah will put the good out of it. And if it comes out bad, it was supposed to happen. And Allah will, Allah will only make it better. Mm-hmm. All it comes down to is your sincere intention. Do, do you guys follow a lot of like Muslim influencers? Because I usually skip their videos. I'm not going to Not lie. Just because really, of what you guys are saying. It depends. So like there's some that I really appreciate. Some people have really... Uh, refreshing or insightful like mm-hmm. views on life sometimes I just like some people like the work that they're doing yeah. mm-hmm. um, for example like some of the influencers that are really interesting to me right now are the ones so I, I, I'm like a child of the internet I, I've mm-hmm. been on <laughs> social media in like a major way for like a really long time like I was a tumblr kid for sure all of yeah um, and so like 
but I, for whatever reason, like I've just tracked a lot of people like from the Tumblr era, like in where they are now and how they've sort of rise and fall on like certain social media platforms and stuff. And one thing that I like, I joke about and I say a lot is like Islam works, mm. meaning that like if you practice it, it literally has an effect on your life. And so one of the most interesting things is like right now there's a whole class of influencers who were non-Muslim or less practicing who because of what's going on in Gaza and Palestine um, are reading the Quran, you know, just to draw strength, whether it's a non-Muslim or it's someone who never um, had the opportunity to sort of learn their faith in a, in a meaningful and organized way. And so there's this whole class of influencer that are either they're fasting Ramadan and they've never fasted before non-Muslim or Muslim. Um, or they're participating in religion beyond, um, like, from a cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, they're really actively, like, seeking out and trying to practice it. And, you know, they're sharing their journey. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, first of all, a lot of it's difficult. And sure, it might get them views and stuff like that, and so they're incentivized on some level. But a lot of it's, like, very earnest. And I just love to see Islam working. Yeah. And I, and I love to see, like, oh, subhanAllah, like, this was their journey. This was their journey. And um, it's interesting because you could say, oh, like, maybe it's fake or maybe it's just reviews or so on and so forth. And like he was saying, like, if your intention is good, um, you know, whether it goes well or not, whether the, it gets views or not, whatever, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward it. Mm -hmm. And if that person had a bad intention, Allah uses bad people for good all the time. And it might have had a really good effect um, on people like right now people are, are flocking to Dallas mm -hmm. from all corners of, of the Muslim uh, community in the United States they're coming here like on field trips <laughs> like we know about this one group of girls like 15 girls from Chicago visiting Wallahi like they're coming like it's a field trip and they're visiting a bunch of masjids and they're getting like students of knots like give them like little um, like talks and stuff like that um, and they were inspired a lot by like some of the videos whether it's like the Gullum videos or epic videos or it's like yakin videos it's or it's just the influencers that bring their little tripods to you know wednesday night class yeah and they record themselves and sure other people are like man this is annoying like why do you have to like do this here and now you're taking away from the experience of others like mm -hmm. yeah but like how many people saw that and are like man i can imagine like raising a muslim family in dallas i, I know a Qalam student that actually joined Qalam because of Mu'az. Yeah. Mm, yeah, mashallah. Oh, I know a few. I, I, a lot of times they would pull me aside and they'll be like, you know, I'm really shy. I don't want to say anything to him. But I've, I'm here because of his vlogs. But they're like, oh, I don't want to say that to him because I don't want to make him feel awkward this, or weird. This is the Qalam salesman right here. What are you talking about? He, you know how many people went to Qalam because of him, mashallah? I wouldn't say all he that. Like, he like... In a good way, guilt trip. I'm like, why not now? Oh, my life. I wouldn't say guilt trip. I bully. Hey. I bully. I, I yeah, yeah, bully yeah. them. I just be like, oh, you're thinking about it? Sign up right now. <laughs> One time, oh, God, astaghfirullah. My friend Muhammad Babakar, I love him to death. Um, he, we, we, me, him, and my friend Ahmed al some of my closest friends, Sunnis from the Sunnis community in um, Maryland, in, in, in Maryland. Um, they would, we would always talk about Qalam, and, you know, I had moved to Dallas for that reason um, <coughs> however many years ago. And so whenever I would go back, they'd always be like, right, when are you coming back? Da, da, da. And I'd be like, nah, y'all should just come. You guys should just come. And so they're like, oh, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. And so Muhammad's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll think about it for sure. And I said, why don't you just sign up right now? He's like, inshallah, when I get home. I was like, all right, bet. Whatever, we're hanging out, we're hanging out. I said, hey, can I use your computer for a second? I just need to look something up. He's like, okay, bet, no problem. He gives it to me. I go to the Qalam uh, Seminary website, and I open up the application <laughs> for <laughs> And I, and I leave it open on his laptop, and I'll be like, okay, I'm done. I close it, I give it to him. Later on that day, he sends the screenshot in our group Steven. chat. He's like, this guy is so sneaky. <laughs> and I'm like, did you sign up? Did you sign up? Because, like, for me, it's, okay, this is what it is for me. When I see someone who has, like, really beautiful character, and they have a very strong mind, and um, they have a very good personality, and I know they could benefit the dean, why wouldn't I tell them to go and study? Mm. I want the best of us to go and study. So people like Muhammad Babakar, people like Ahmed Alamin, many, many other giants in our community who are already doing good work, if they just had ilm, bro, mm. bro, like it would, it would go, Islam would have so, it would be able to make so many more um, like strides. Like I always think about the dua of um, the Prophet where Prophet. he said, basically like, Ya Allah, like strengthen Islam by one of two people. He was talking about, I believe, Abu Jahl and Umar al-Khattab. And obviously, Allah SWT answered. One of the two Umars. One mm -hmm. of the two Umars, yeah. Um, 
I don't know if I have the names right, but I know obviously Allah Subhanahu wa Taala picked Omar al Khattab, and it was like someone like that with like a very strong personality, um, someone who was a Furqan knew the difference between good and bad, someone that Shaitan crossed the street from, hmm. right? Who was who people used to describe as like, oh, my donkey will convert before him. Hmm. And what did he do for Islam? No one expanded the borders like Omar al Khattab. No one like. Omar, 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 Omar was, I get Omar was that guy. Omar was that guy. He was guy. him. He was him. He was him. <laughs> he was him before there was a him to be him. You Allah, know. Allah, Allah. <laughs> but my point is, is this: like when you see like really amazing people, is like, and I and I think this is important, is that you don't yeah, have to be the person. Though, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but most of that shaja'a, most of that bravery, he learned it from Abu Bakr. Oddly mm. A thousand percent. Oddly enough. Subhanallah. Not only not only did he learn from Abu Bakr, he used to be afraid of him. Yes, he'd be like, "I'm only afraid of the anger of Abu Bakr." Oh, but yeah, as you're saying. Oh, sorry. to to finish my point is like when you, I think that as Muslims, we don't we don't have to be the person, we don't have to be the 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 the, the brave warrior or the savior or anything, but we should be the one who encouraged them or taught them or facilitated for them or called them towards good, right? We could be the one who made that well for the one who, you know, opens X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. Um, and that might be the way that we are written for us on the day of judgment. That might be it. So the kachari in the end of the day. Subhanallah. I hope someone uh, listening to this actually joins Quantum because of this Shala. conversation. Shala. 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 What was your friend's name that passed away? By his name is Bayan Ahmed. Look, can, Ahmed. You, can you uh, make a quick prayer dua for him and everyone? I have to. Can, can, uh, That's your friend. Say I mean, just a, no, 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 a quick one liner or something. No, pretty much. Just, uh, may Allah forgive him and all of us for our shortcomings. Um, may Allah um, grant him Jannatul Firdaus um, um, and now allow his friends and families to reunite with him in Jannat. Allahumma balighum Ramadan. Amin. Yeah, man. The, the, <clears throat> what you said was very profound because one of, one of the reasons I started this podcast was the death of my friends. And I heard a quote where you don't become a man until you lose someone close to you. And I think that's very true. Well, like grief, well, like when, we, when I was studying grief in, in, during my master's, it was very interesting because we learned that grief is losing someone, but it's losing something. It's, a, it's just loss. Grief in general is like the loss of something and getting over it. Either it be a friend, family member, <coughs> or a relationship, or a friend, mm-hmm. right? Or losing something you feel very valuable, a job. Yeah. School, failing, right? Grief has, subhanAllah, within its gray clouds has a silver lining yeah. because it teaches you patience. Yeah. And in the, in, Allah, Allah teaches us in the Quran about it, right? It's just like, don't, don't grieve, right? You, but the Prophet grieved. He's like, don't grieve because in Surah Daha, what does Allah say? He says, the hereafter is more satisfying than that. Yeah. Right? Don't become hopeless in your don't don't become, yeah. Don't yeah, because hopeless. hopelessness is 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 the antithesis of a believer. Once you lose hopelessness, you you're gone. Yeah. Right. Subhanallah, so what you're saying is very true because Yaqub in La Tayasu he says in uh, uh, yeah. in yeah. 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 Barely the the only people that that have become hopeless. In the mercy or this, uh, yeah. I think Rawh, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Uh, is the disbelievers only the disbelievers. It's literally haram to like lose hope at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, I re- literally, you know it's an crazy. insult. Yeah. I just had a we had an interesting conversation with a few of our friends from California. Well, one of them, they brought this question. They're like, it's a very deep question too. Like, so you know, hopefully there's a, a warning or whatever. Um, they were like, I have a question. So let's say someone has me at gunpoint, right? Can I off myself? Can I like unlive myself? Right? And can I'm like, what? Now? Unalive. That's like the PC word of saying. I mean, oh. he can bleep it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unalive. Just like I shoot, 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 yeah, shoot, yeah, shoot yeah, yourself. Yeah. Okay, okay, right? Okay. So you don't have to go through the pain or if you're going through like their, you know. But they already have you at gunpoint. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so, so like, they're, they're, they're asking this question. They're like, they're like, you know, what if just to stop myself from the pain? I was like, I was like, why would you take away the opportunity to become a Shaheed? Mm. Number one. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Right. You take away the opportunity to become a Shaheed. You take away the opportunity for a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you... Put in your own hands. There's... May there's Allah save me from my own actions, bro. I mean, I mean, and I save mean. me from my fate being in my own hands. Yeah. I, I think this really relates to what's happening today because 
I don't feel like this Ramadan is the same. Mm, there's this, it's not. There's this cloud hanging over our heads of Gaza and Palestine. And I'm not going to lie, I, I've been ashamed of it, but every once in a while, I feel like I almost get angry with Allah a little bit. Mm. Like, why, why are you letting this happen? And subhanAllah, that's I, you know how beautiful that is. But I but I make tasbih. Sheikh, uh, um, I think it was Norman Ali Khan was talking, or, or Stead Norman Ali Khan was talking about that, where tasbih is actually the removal mm. of bad thoughts of Allah. Allah. But I don't, I'm just Allah. quoting him. Allah. Yeah, Sheikh Mikhail would say they're affirmations. Hmm. Oh, you want to go over divine affirmations real quick? <laughs> No, it is, has that been the case for you guys this Ramadan? Does it, does it feel the same as other Ramadans? It doesn't feel the same. Um, but granted what's going on, but like to go on your point of being angry, right? I mean, so what we were taught when in, in anger, it stems from a, a place of unjust, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's happening is very unjust, right? When you get angry at someone, they did something to take away the rights of yourself. Right, anger. The core emotion of anger is comes. From, that anger is the emotion, but what triggers the emotion is injustice. Mm-hmm. Right. What happens is, of course, it's natural to think, mm-hmm. right. And then, what does? There are some times we have to, you know, question. Right. Allah allows us this room to question, but the thing is, is how we end up after understanding that khir, like Ramadan says, qadr Allah ma shafa. Right. But the thing is, is opens up an opportunity for us to grow. Why am I angry at Allah? Why am I angry in general? Right? Because if we don't ask ourselves these questions, there's no purpose of growth. Right? It gives us an opportunity to grow. And subhanAllah, like you asked us, like, you know, what's going on in Gaza and around the world, you know, in Kashmir, you know what's happening in India, no one talks about it. Like they are Sudan, Sudan, they're Sudan, not the Uyghurs in China oh, yes. as we speak. Like we, alhamdulillah, you know, like Allah's, if if without like, we can have a whole conversation with social media, yeah. but like without this, we wouldn't know what's happening around the world. But the thing is, for us, I think this Ramadan is an op- is an opportunity to show shukr, to show gratitude. Where are we? We're here. We're having drinks. We're able to have a podcast. We're able mm. to be out late at night. We have a home to sleep in. Our family's with us. This, if if this Ramadan is not nothing but to show gratefulness, then it's a waste. Mm-hmm. I think this is what emphasizes. This is what you know, Shit Omar says. Shit, yeah, said reject. Everyone has been saying, "How do we deal with all this going on? What does Islam teach us to be grateful?" Right? Mm-hmm. Because if we're not, then we're not going to realize what we're going to lose. Because mm-hmm. these people have lost everything. Our brothers and sisters have lost everything. Or they've gained everything at the same time, right? Like, like you see it, everyone, everyone's like, it's like I lost, I still, I've lost everything, but my will to, you know, my bro, they sold taqwa. the world for Jannah. Yeah, who they made a much better uh, bargain than any one of us mm. who traveled here across the seas. You know, we gave up whatever we went at home for commerce to be able to like raise our families. Alhamdulillah, it's still a good thing, but bro, they gave up everything for Jannah. Like, I think that as much as there's a cloud over everything. In regards to like the sadness and the I think for me the the hardest part is the helplessness mm. right it's 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 another opportunity to remember my own weakness because I think like a lot of where the anger comes from is number one it's a lack of understanding of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like a wise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowing it and number two remembering <clears throat> that uh, this is a function of men's wickedness mm. It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing this. It's he's allowing it. And he was allowing it for his own reasons. Free will as well. And at the end of the day, if you think about it, nothing has woken us up like this. Mm. The Muslims have been asleep for a long time. And now, more so than ever, like the 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 spirit of Islam is rising. One of the one of the my favorite people that I've been able that I've been listening to recently is Sami Hamdi. Allah. And I love listening to him because all he does and he has like these curious like ways of speaking it's just designed to rouse your spirit Mm. to like make you like remember who you are as a muslim being a muslim is not a small thing being a muslim entails um being the uh khalifa of allah of allah on earth right like we're here to be the caretakers of this earth meaning upholding allah's justice Mm. making sure that allah's laws and his attributes are honored and upheld throughout the land and if we were doing our jobs 
if we were righteous, if we had woken up earlier, obviously if is from the shaitan, as mom always says, so I'm not trying to get there. But the idea is, is that like the anger that we're feeling is a function of our own helplessness. Yeah. And it's a curable problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant victory. But what does he want from us? At, at the I end think, of, I think, oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I, I'll, I'll just finish. Um, whether it was the COVID Ram- Ramadan or whether it was this Ramadan, I always ask, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preparing us for? Mm. SubhanAllah. There, Allah is always preparing us for something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any action that happens, anything that happens in the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing it for a reason. And for me to be able to, obviously I don't know the wisdom of Allah, but I always try to think it out, like what could be a reason? Because it gives me peace in my own heart. Yeah. And for me, the massive amount of people coming into Islam because of the faith of the Palestinian people. Not only are the Palestinian people not sure, they are being oppressed. But wallahu alam, what amazing things may happen for the ummah because of their du'as. Yeah. Right? We, there may be a massive Muslim empire uh, from the future spanning all across the Levant and all across North Africa and all maybe from the du'as of these oppressed people we don't know mm-hmm. the Prophet ﷺ was the answer of Ibrahim ﷺ's du'a how Sahana many thousands of, thousands of years before right so th- that's we don't know what wisdom Allah SWT has allowed this for yeah and that's Allah yeah. Yeah. but this is why actually I mentioned TikTok they're trying to ban TikTok yeah. Now, mm. because of what you guys are saying, because of the influencers you mentioned, because of the spirit of Islam and it actually working, yeah, they're now try. They did you see that in the set in the, the house? Mm. They passed it three fifty six to eighteen something. Insane. Eighty one percent of the house. I don't think I don't remember the last time the house has voted eighty one percent on anything. I have no clue. And you, you know, th- I I was very angry with this. I didn't even know if I could do the podcast today because really? I woke up from my nap. And I saw the news of TikTok, uh-huh. and it just got me riled up because it's yeah. right in your face. The ADL just a, a week or so ago was saying TikTok is turning the younger generation against us. We have to stop TikTok. Mm. And a week later, here we are, the Congress, China, we're banning TikTok. Bro, the truth is powerful. Like, w- first of all, like the ultimate witnesses, the people of Palestine, right? Like they are shaheed. They are witness. They are they are a, a testament to their Islam and to their faith, and people just witnessing their faith is enough to, like, have like massive reverberations. Mm. The fact that like people are so openly speaking against Israel for the first time in how long, ever, ever. The CIA director won't even do that. Yeah, not only that, like we are witnessing in real time how much under the yoke of like the israeli like government the whole of america is yeah. whether it's whether it's politicians even like tech like the the tech industry how many of those people like the people the leader of these apps we think they're so powerful and one call from some israeli like government official they're terrified yeah why elon musk going on this crazy apology tour and mm. making all of these like wild changes when he everyone's like oh no he's so uh, you know, he's like this, like very Yankee guy. Like he can say and do whatever he wants. Okay. One, one little call. Terrified. Because if you're not Muslim, they scare you. Of course. They scare you because just the way they operate, they're like a little beehive, right? And so us Muslims, subhanAllah, this is why we're a mercy, like you were saying, we're a mercy upon this world because no one would be able to stand up for them if we didn't exist. Mm. As Muslims, nobody would be able. Can you, Rahim? Can you pull up that ADL video? Uh, like the the leader Brian Greenblatt, ADL TikTok is our problem. I want you to hear what this guy has to say, and I, I want to stick on the subject real quick because mm. I I really think it would be an issue if they ban TikTok in America. I, I <coughs> man, I'm, I'm of two minds for it, man. Brian, I'll be honest Bri- with no, you. no, Brian Greenblatt. Greenblatt. Yeah, it's a it's a very common Jewish last name. Go to videos, Rahim. But I mean, to be fair, I do have to say they were trying to ban TikTok like years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Trump administration. But they're and, just, and no, also but they, China also <coughs> with uh, has like on the rise. Well, it's not even just that China has like really specific restrictions against TikTok, even in their own country. Yeah, like the algorithm that we get is not the algorithm they get. Like I'm of two minds on the TikTok issue. I'll be really honest with you. 
as a recovering TikTok addict. <laughs> I'm not uh, recovering. Search brother. it up on YouTube. No, but uh, here's the thing, though. They got what they wanted off of TikTok already. Mm-hmm. The last time they had that issue, China accommodated it. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Accommodated. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the, I, Meta did the same thing. Yes, that first one. But I also want to point out that we have a major, major, major generational problem. All the polling I've seen, ADL's polling, ICC's polling, independent polling, suggests this is not a left-right gap, folks. The issue in the United States of support for Israel is not left and right. It is young and old. And the numbers of young people who think that Hamas's, you know, massacre was justified is shockingly and terrifyingly high. And so we really have a TikTok problem, a Gen Z problem, that our community needs to put the same brains that gave us Tagli, the same brains that gave us all these other amazing innovations we need to put our energy toward this, like, fast. Because, again, like, we've been chasing this left-right divide. It's the wrong game. The real game is the next generation. And the Hamas and their accomplices, the, idi- the useful idiots in the West, are falling in line in ways that are terrifying. Last thing I'll just say, we saw a dramatic change in the language of the activists here in America on October the 8th. The language of groups that we've long tracked who've long been problematic, like Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voices for Peace, they flipped like this and went to like Iranian propaganda. This was leaked. This was a private ADL meeting mm-hmm. that was leaked. Allah look at how the, look at how they're talking. And a week later, suddenly TikTok, 81%. It, 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 that's the thing, man. Fear. I, this is what I think one of the biggest things we have to learn from this situation. Mm. We are not outnumbered. We are out organized. A thousand percent. Mm. That, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. That's why people like you, I, you guys, I appreciate so much. And I would, I, you're welcome to come on the show anytime because you are like beacons of organization. I wouldn't. Oh, no, no, organization. No, no. You know, and and that that's huge. And I respect people like that. I love people like that. And, and I'll always support it. And the people that I feel like are trying to tear other Muslims down, unless they change, I ignore them. Mm. Yeah. And, and, I, and I hope we can always all support each other. And anyone listening, if you have a Muslim, if, if just because he's a Muslim, support them mm. in if their cause. Even all this whole, I don't know if you guys saw like when Sean King became Muslim, people are like, oh, he's a grifter. Mm. A grifter. Man, okay. And I'm like, you it's, guys are a fitna for saying that, bro. Man, I'm of two minds. I'm a, I'm a child of the internet, like I said, right? And so I've been around for a lot of the stuff that has been going on. It's so funny because I remember I was sitting in Shab Nasser's office when him and Sheikh Mikhail, they were having some lunch or something. And I was just kicking it, annoying them like I normally do. And I was like, oh, did you guys, you know, hear about Sean King? He's like really on board with the you know, Palestinian cause and mashallah, so on and so forth. And Sheikh Mikhail was like, yeah, I really like him and so on and so forth. And uh, Sheikh Nasr was like, yeah, like he seems like he's doing good. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, um, sometimes the way that he does it is very distasteful. And on top of that, there's a bit of a history there in terms of misusing donation money or at least accusations of it. And enough of them that like there's been a few court cases and stuff like that. And this is something that is like somewhat consistent where it's like either over and actually first let me first foremost say <clears throat> I, I was i was there um the first night of Taraweh when he when he spoke at valley ranch did they after. announce that because i didn't yeah, know they, what was happening uh when he converted they didn't but they just spoke he was just he was just there so he came the night before Ramadan, uh after asar he, he he did his conversion with his wife mashallah um and afterwards, after Isha, they had him speak a little bit about why he converted. And um, him and his wife. What did he say? He basically mentioned that, like, viewing the faith of the Palestinian people, the fact that I think him and Khalid Beydoun have been having conversations about it. Him and Sheikh, and Sheikh Omar have been having conversations about it. And he said one of the things I really appreciated was that they never pressured me or pushed me into it. And then later on in, like, a, a Facebook or an Instagram post, he mentioned that it was actually his wife who found one of his Qur'ans and started to get more into it 
and she kind of also kind of helped push him into making the decision now and at the end of the day he's he's accepted islam we welcome into we welcome him into the faith we welcome into the brotherhood of islam we want him to feel comfortable here we want him to be an amazing and excellent muslim and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, forgive him for whatever went on before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put well, barakah. Shahada immediately. Mm-hmm. A thousand percent. Take, removes anything you did before. Absolutely. That being said, um, when someone establishes a pattern of behavior, um, <clears throat> it doesn't, at, at the end of the day, this is a moment for him that he could go one of two ways, right? Where um, he has an opportunity to really learn and, and grow within Islam. And like I said, Islam works. So the more that he practices, the, the the more that it will refine his character. Islam beautifies and it and it brings out what was already good inside of someone. It makes them more them, mm-hmm. and it, and it also like it removes impurities and it removes like like the the negative and kind of rubs off some of the harsh edges of people's personalities and characters. Yeah. So, bi'idnillah, like this will make him something amazing, but also we, as as Muslims, we don't get stung from the same hole twice. Meaning that if we notice that there is some sort of pattern of behavior that reemerges, or that if we get a whiff that um, you know there's like some misuse of funding and so on and so forth, we, we take notice, right? And I think like at the end of the day, we we have to give him a chance. Um, we have to. He deserves that from us, and I think Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would be upset with us if we did not. We welcome him with open arms. Um, I think what a lot of people are afraid of is that um, not a lot. No, I'll say a lot. I'll say a lot because I know that the general activist community is was has been frustrated with him for a very long time. Um, a lot of it, depending on which circles you're in, you have to understand that his reputation has been really bad for a long time. And at the end of the day, like I don't want to mention that over and over again because he's become a Muslim and in, in, uh, forgiven, right? At the end of the day. Um, but there are people who are frustrated because, and I and I do take this point from them, is that uh, when someone becomes a Muslim, like immediately platforming them, and I think is a problem that we have as like a Muslim community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that it's like the Shiuk and stuff who are necessarily doing that, but it's like uh, Muslim organizations <coughs> and people who see like clout and influence as, as something that... Um, well, we can't act upon someone's assumed intention. I'm, I'm not saying right. that I'm saying that we observe behavior right and we observe what's going on and if something similar to what has Why happened in the past donate to any links that he puts but still support I mean him and the support problem him. is is that trusted Islamic institutions will are whether they have and some have but they will continue to use him because uh, right now we fully bought into like influencer culture mm-hmm. right like whatever we can do to get the the Muslim dollar we're gonna do unfortunately um, and, and we've seen that and whether it's like in you know mashallah Me- Megan Rice is I think her name she just converted and mashallah she's everywhere Megan Rice she's she, she's, she's she read the read the Quran on TikTok live and became Muslim and she became a Muslim of, can you search her up real quick I just want to F- see fantastic like, person actually, really beautiful personality may Allah want to have mercy on her it's that that oh, one right there baby? no no no, no, no on Muslim. the left um, oh yes yeah yes. she she just became Muslim yes right um on on panels all over the place at all the major muslim like um whether it's like the modest fashion or the you know and that's i'm not saying that's necessarily a negative thing but she was already big before that that's what i'm saying so they're utilizing people with large internet platforms and and this is the thing is like um having influence and uh, like a large following isn't um isn't a replacement for like doing a character check or being intelligent about how you're using someone and so at the end of the day they know that if they use brother sean king's name to uh advocate because there's still a large group of people who love him and they've loved the work that he's been doing so they know that that can bring in dollars so they will platform him and they will put him um in positions to uh you know bring in money and now again because of the history this is what people are afraid of. Is like we don't want him to. Muslims are some of the most generous people in the world. It's like I remember uh, Tarek Ture. 
He's a he's a he's a poet. He said, "I fear for my Muslim brothers and sisters when the Nigerian scammers find out about the Muslims, <laughs> because if they ever do, like these princes are gonna get rich. These princes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he knows that like we're already generous. Our pockets are open if we hear of a good cause or we. What was it, that uh, statistic on how much zakat money we give a year? It's some ridiculous. It's a ridiculous. We Muslims hey, by far give more. Charity. No, no, not three billion. I think it was like three hundred billion. Can you search? By far, one? Muslims give more charity than any other group, as far as far as I know, right? And we love to give it, and that's a beautiful trait of the Muslims. That being said. Oh, this is the uh, yeah the statistics. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. That being said, right, like. Because of that, people are afraid. Because if this person has accusations, of, it's like it's like saying, "Hey, like uh, someone has committed fraud, right? Like they they were a banker and they committed fraud, um, and now they've gotten a new position. Who knows? Maybe you know they went to jail. They reformed themselves, so on and so forth. You might put them in a new company. They, I don't think they should be banned from doing work, right?" But do you put them back in a position over, of, of responsibility over money? Hmm. Yep. Would you, or would you at least watch over them while, they're, while you're doing that? Would I, you at least be careful or be really, like, you'd think twice. Here's the thing, though. I, I think strategically, Allah, Allah gives victory to this ummah through tyrants and through righteous people. A thousand percent. So I don't even care if someone's a tyrant. And helping the religion still. I actually have an unpopular opinion. I think Trump helped American Muslims quite a bit. He didn't mean to, sure. but he helped American Muslims. I, quite I a think bit. in the same way that Gaza has pushed us to um, relearn and get stronger in our faith, I think Trump did something very similar. Yeah. I think having a common enemy often does that. Hmm. That being said, like I don't believe that Sean King is the enemy by any stretch of the means. No. I think he has really good intentions a lot of the times, but I think that sometimes some of the actions that he may have taken before Islam were in poor taste. I think he's definitely made some mistakes. And I pray and hope that he takes some time to really like um, learn and mature and grow in his faith um, and allow Islam to affect him. But don't you think yes. when people say things like he purposefully took his shahada right before Ramadan to get... That's, 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 that's gross. No, that's no, that's gross. It's, 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 it comes back to the Andrew Tate thing. Right? I wouldn't and even get into that. Like, in the end of the day, when someone takes a shahada, no You're matter if it's a good intention, bad way. intention. You're a terrible Googler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, it's like when people uh, accuse converts of, of, of converting for a girl. Mm. Who cares? Or a guy. Exa who cares? Who cares? He accepted Islam. Dude, pro the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to give people, people money. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day... And, and again, oh, okay, let, let's clarify that. Not give people money so that they accept, but like they would accept Islam and, and he would give them a gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he or he would, he would treat people in certain ways or give them a little extra to soften their heart towards Islam. Yeah, like if the, the booty of war, yeah, uh, a, a larger percentage would go to the new Muslims. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and at the end of the day, right, I don't really care why someone became Muslim. Yes. Because even someone who accepted for a bad reason. Like I said, Islam works. Yeah. So by you doing the motions, there's a reason why there's a difference between a Muslim and a believer. As a Muslim, you have just accepted. As a believer, you actually believe and Islam has affected you to the point that you truly have witnessed Islam. It's affected you. It is apparent in your actions in the way that you move through the world. I want to give him time. Um, but I can understand why people are frustrated. I can understand why people... Um, and, and it's I was, a wrong, it's a weird attention to place in a time like this. Can, hey, how old are you guys? I'm 28. You're 28? 28. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys married? No. No. I knew that way. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, why are you setting this up, man? Bro, you, you trying to make fun of us? No, I'm trying to, you know, you know, maybe a sister Stop watching Allah, this, Stop bro. Allah. My boy's out here, bro. Remember to cut yeah. this out. <laughs> if you're looking for a certified yapper. <laughs> No, no stuff a lot. Um, point is, I can't like, call you guys out on this, huh? Huh? I said I can't call you guys out. Listen, on this is a blind leading the blind, brother. Look no, at your hands. There's blah. nothing on the hand. I know, brother. Raise up your hands for me, real quick. No, we're Come all, on, man. We're, all we're struggling, man. <laughs> man. Don't even get me started. This is a whole other conversation. <laughs> That's why I want to oh start. Oh my god, we're gosh. all single men here. Yeah, and I, a lot of a lot of the demographic that watches is 25 to 35. Mm. It's a lot of people. I feel like it's um. I feel like it's very difficult for us American Muslims to find someone, you know, 
How, how have you guys been attempting to navigate this space? Yeah, Khalid. Yeah. Inshallah. Huh? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? What do you mean attempting to navigate this space? What does that mean? <laughs> like looking for a spouse, right? I mean, I think that we're doing it in all the usual ways. And Meaning I'm- that like we're outside. <laughs> right? Catch me outside. <laughs> no, like, okay. Um, I, I think that like trying to like do things in like a good way is always difficult, mostly because uh, there's nothing, there's no established culture here, mm. really. It's somewhat regional, like every community kind of has its own way. In the DMV, you know, y'all were just best friends for a very long time, and then you showed up with a ring one day, Allah, Allah. right? Mm. And everybody was just cool about it. <laughs> In Dallas, it really doesn't work like that. In Arizona, you didn't even talk to women mm. publicly. Like, that wasn't a thing. Um, some communities, like, it's a little bit more common to have friend groups that are, like, whatever. Like, that, so that they end up meeting each other. And uh, You know, it's funny. In in, uh, in Maryland, I think, Helping Hand, because they were volunteering together, so many people got married because of that. And so being able to, like, interact. MSAs. MSAs, you know, so on and so forth. Some people here would say that... Um, uh, MSA stands for Marriage Student Association. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> you know, so on and so forth, right? So being able to like, for me, I've always wanted to meet someone um, out in the wild, so to speak. Like I maybe did some good work with them, or I got to interact with them in a community setting. It doesn't necessarily mean that like we were friends or anything, but you know, I saw them out and about doing good work or being like a good person, and I was like, oh, I kind of like that. You know, it was one of the most depressing tweets I've ever read. Oh. There's one that says you've mo- uh, most people have met their spouse before the age of 21. Oh. I was like, brother, what? That didn't mean they that's... married them at that time. That's that just means that they already know them. Are you afraid no. of the women that you've met? No, no, I'm just saying. Like, I'm why? sure you met a couple of good ones in there. <laughs> like, <"Who?" laughs> <Listen, laughs> at, at the end of the day, oh, brother, please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Bro, you see this trend where like uh, Muslim women are attacking like. Uh, Male podcasters, Muslim male podcasters. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, are you I'm okay? So are you sick? happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I want so you to know. You only bring on we, we, were, we were getting cooked. <laughs> Who? Uh, when we were like, oh yeah, we're doing a podcast today. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. All of our friends were like, yo, what, what are you going to talk about? Women's rights and all. No, that? I said, I, like, I, I told them, I said, we're talking about hijab. The only thing we're qualified to talk about. <laughs> yeah, they, they weren't happy. <laughs> Wait, did you know what podcast that you guys were calling? Uh, we told them afterwards. Yeah, we were just joking. Like oh, my okay. sisters and stuff, they're very interested. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll probably end up watching it and stuff. Um, no, this is a very. Uh, it's a very. It's like a random conversation. This is like a random like late night conversation with the boys. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the right way to have it, not like oh, talking about you know having four wives and stuff. Like it's just like, subhanallah. It's just you brought up a really good point. <laughs> <I'm> trying to <laughs> move it away. You brought up a really good point about like this culture, right? I was asked this by uh, a close friend of mine. He's like, "How do I approach a girl Islamically?" Living here, I was like, "That's so true." Right? Like, how do you approach each other? We're not even taught that. We're taught, oh, what are the ways of getting married? Well, it's a halal way. It's a haram way, right? But how do you approach in this day and age where you can't straight go to Baba, get Baba's number? Some girls will be like, yo, that's kind of crazy. Right? Or some girl, some guys will be like, yo, I'm scared. Right? I knew you had Sheikh Abdullah al on here, right? He talked, probably talked about masculinity, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing for us is, is for, we can't control the other the other side of the aisle, right? We can't control women. We can't control anyone but ourselves. But understanding is when we have, you know, Sheikh Abdullah's big thing is about the rajal, right? What, the, the, what a man is and what a prophetic masculinity is. If we can embody that, the <clears throat> lack of a better term, the, the aura of that will attract. Yes. Right? Yeah. I was talking to my roommate about this actually last night. Because he just got married, right? Or he, he, he's engaged. Mashallah. 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 But we, I was talking to him about this. I was like, you, you attract who you are. Mm, if you're yeah. a man who all you do is spend time watching porn or smoking or whatever you're doing, you can't be sitting there looking for a girl that's, you know, got everything in check right. because your culture tells you that's the case. Yeah. And, and Allah won't allow it. You mm. have to understand that she's also a believing woman who has a re- personal relationship with Allah and Allah's going to look out for her. Yeah, Just like you yeah. want Allah to look out for you and yeah. get you a righteous woman, Allah's looking out for her and going to give her a righteous man. 100%. So yeah. if, uh, you know what I started telling myself is, 
I should already start operating as if I'm married. Yeah. I should yeah. already be, and that's literally what a single Muslim should operate like yeah. he's been. No zina, no, of course, you know, yeah, cheap, yeah. you know, flirting, all that stuff. So, if you start acting like you're already in a relationship with your future wife, that that starts, you know, putting baraka in it, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And love, I'm love, I never really thought of that. That's a really beautiful way to putting it. Yeah. Already. Living life like you're already married. SubhanAllah. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> SubhanAllah, you, got, awkward. You, got, you guys could talk about everything but the marriage thing. You get <laughs> silent, huh? That's all men are. Dude, that, that's well, all it's like, men. It's I'll, like, I'll be, because it's the blind, none of us in here are married, bro. Yeah. yeah. So we it's like, you know, you know, my favorite trend in the Muslim community is like, you know, your your friend gets married and like three months later, he's giving you marriage advice. Mm. <laughs> like immediately. So you see a woman when she, uh, when she gets upset, this is how you got it. And I'm like, all right, brother, relax. But genuinely, like, we're all just trying we're to figure it out. We're giving single advice. We're not giving marriage advice. Yeah. We're I mean, single I'm, man I'm not even trying to, I'm not even trying to give either. I think that um, the landscape is uh, difficult, but I think that, like, anything's possible, right? Like, I think that Allah SWT has continued to allow us to make dua mm -hmm. for whatever it is that we want. And I have trust that Allah SWT will fulfill that dua in the best way, right? Do I maybe have things that I need to work on? Probably. Absolutely. Um, that's never going to change. And I think that shouldn't be a reason to not pursue. Yeah. Um, I Having think excuses. That it's the same thing. It's like imposter syndrome versus like the overinflated you person know. who's like, nah, I'm perfect. My mom says so. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> and everybody got to come closer to the middle. Um, and like, we're all in a work of progress. We're all working on it. Um, I will say that you do got to work on it meaning like you do got to pursue on some level you got to make some effort yeah right you hey, make your eye and you make some effort hey, that's you, the said, you have to have the grizz game you know the grizz i, I will say riz, riz. my favorite thing is when uh, she will tell guys like you just don't got game that's your problem but i see you i see you no talk. you haven't seen Yo, me. hold on hold on hold on you haven't seen me relax let me let me <laughs> yeah. let me land yeah, yeah, yeah. i was saying Everybody i see you so. sweet talk the homies if you gave her a fourth of that you're good <laughs> i'm not worried no 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 yo do this whole thing about like you know, this is so funny. Like our, uh, like my sister, she was just like, "Bro, the way you talk to your homies, if you give that ounce to a girl, I'd be like, yeah." But the thing is, with the homies, there's no like awkwardness. There's no tension. There's no tension. You can be like, like when I see you smile, I think of the moon. Like that's like that's crazy. <laughs> you can do that, right? That's that's crazy. Inshallah, right? You know, man, more Baraka nur in your face, mashallah. Uh, you know, this is so easy, but like, well, girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that, that the the meme. You know that that meme of like that little um, the hamster, the little yeah, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can I'm see, we're on <laughs> Hey man, you guys were on the were you on the Yaqeen uh, series videos also? Nah, nah, that's all. There's bro, you King when, when they zoomed in on your beautiful face, you haven't gotten any DMs from that. People uh, telling you you were fitna to the Ummah during Ramadan. I first of all, uh, the only fitna was. Uh, never mind. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, I, so I, I've gotten a lot of people. It's, it's so funny because it's like the second time I've like appeared in like the background of one of these things. It's always so interesting to see who recognized it. At least this time was my, my face. Last time it was just a silhouette and people were like, oh my God, we haven't spoken in like 10 years. How are you doing? I saw you on a Yakim video. And then some people were like, yo, can you hook me up with Sheikh Omer's? <laughs> I'm trying to get him for like an event. And I'm like, yo, I didn't even meet homeboy. Like I was just in yeah. the background and at the end of the day it's mostly just people who are like old friends and stuff no, no, you by your there's shadow, no huh? first of all hold up there's no shorty that's sliding up because <laughs> you know what i mean like from a yakin video are you not paying attention <laughs> yeah like they're, they're, they're trying to get closer to god they're not trying to get closer to me i promise you <laughs> and that's fine um i i think how is it though how is it filming with yakin it was fun it was what, like what do they have you doing like how what's the setup here so okay, Fozy um, and the team. Uh, who else? Who's who's in the team? Sara Mutman this year, Ahmed Asad. Um, is Chance a part of this also? Yes. Uh, well, well, Chance, he's filming a different series, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't filming this year. So he's this no way. Iman yeah, Kay, which the Iman Kay Bush Abdullah. That's that's right. him. Fozy does the all uh, the the Ramadan series every year, yeah. and Fozy Marshall is an is an amazing. Uh, Do you guys uh, use the Red Dragon for that? I mentioned this. Yes. So. Okay. Man, okay. Everything there is that. 
it, it's beautiful. Sure. Yeah. And Ahmed Asad really came through and like leveled up the the studio. Like I remember the first year I came, it was just a big dark room and there was very minimal equipment. Now they have like an iPad with like all the lights are like set up that like you can control each you know, one so individually, for- the <laughs> color intensity of everything. <laughs> what we did, what we did one last year was we took the TV. We we're like, how do we find a center point? So <laughs> I literally took a, a, a Sharpie and just went on the TV and made a thing so we can find where the, the, the thirds are, the, the center. Because they were they were taking the, the image from the TV and they were putting it out yeah. to the TV so they could have like a reference monitor. Because yeah. they didn't have like proper reference monitors. You know, reference monitors will often have like the little cross hatch. So you can always have things centered and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> we were doing it very ghetto style, mashallah. Sure. A lot of it was run and gun for... Uh, a lot of the beginning of it, right? But like, high quality stuff. That's this what was getting. last year's Yaqeen series. Two you're talking years about? ago. Yeah, uh, two, two years. When I was, yeah, two years. Two years ago. When Technically, you were, yeah, two years ago. When you're still working there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, um, you know, they have an idea. It's something that they put together. There's a there's a good amount of, there's a good team. So they they come up with, so there's pre-production, right? So every, every like large scale production like this, there's like a, there's like pre-production. There's someone who's like a producer who's working on it in the background, making sure that you book all the people that need to be a part of this project. Storyboarding. Um, storyboarding. Um, you get a script out. You have to figure out like um, you know where you want it. Like you have to figure out like your locations and stuff. Sometimes some stuff will be shot off camera, and then you have to come up with different sets and stuff like that to actualize like whatever initial idea you had about the production. Um, and then you start figuring out like actors. What kind of actors do you need to fill the different roles that you're trying to depict? Like this year was a lot more complex than like yeah. past years because. It was almost every, um, the way that they storyboarded out was like almost every single video is like, um, it's like a little short film yeah. and it, it's just visual. So there's no sound, but like Sheikh Omer is talking about a concept and there's almost like a little story playing in the background, yeah. which I thought was really beautiful, honestly. And like, as you guys watch the videos, pay attention to those background scenes. Real important stuff is happening. And Wotman did a great job oh, acting. Mo- fantastic, so brother. Wow. Man, no, yeah, I'll tell you. Let, so t- let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I was there for one of the days, right? This yeah. is one of the the days where you you were there. Okay. When you're consoling him, and he did that very intense scene. That's not Mumin. That's no. Oh, not Mumin. I'm that's sorry, sorry. That's Noman. Oh, sorry, Noman sorry, sorry. hasn't. So Noman is the baby. Oh. Noman, oh. I really have to say. That. They oh. don't. They don't know who Noman is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's okay. Noman is a very handsome, tall brother from Kalam. Uh, well, he he. Uh, I believe. He's a, he's a, he's like around Kalam and Yakin. He's from that community. He's from this community. Grew up here, and he's he's one of the main actors in the story. I won't tell you who. Um, you were saying something that basically, like I was on set. I I have a small part to play, beyond just like being in Jannah. Being in Jannah, yeah. Well That's what that was supposed to <laughs> signify. The little close up was supposed to like humanize the different folks' agenda, and like kind of give a face to it. Um, which I really appreciated the storytelling. Um, sure. I, was, I was talking to Fozzy about it. I was like, it's... Wait, so you're saying this was this is something that the video's not out yet? That no, there's... Where there's, this scene happened. There's 30 intensity. videos, bro. Yes, 30 videos. You're going... So how it, they play it is you're going... How Sheikh Omar structured it, and the team has structured it, is that from birth, from before conception, from literally the pen, yeah, all yeah. the way to death to Jannah. Allah al-Mahfud, the, the first creation... <clears throat> And then the pact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made with the, the creation um, on that field. And then all the way through, like, uh, you know, birth, uh, living through your life, the different struggles, of the highs and the lows. And you're going through one. It's like, it's, uh, they, they made it into an like, actual visual series where visual you're going series. through a story with one person. And with, like, yeah, yeah. So there's like... I have noticed the little kid's gotten older. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like... Keep an eye on him. There's some fun stuff happening that's coming up, inshallah. <laughs> well, I, like, yeah, I remember yeah. like reading the script, being there, talking to like the amount of people. So I'll tell you this. <laughs> if you're working there, it went from a team of three to four, and alhamdulillah, are, you gain, like amazing graphics team and all that stuff. Mashallah. To when it was it? Almost like 10 people. Yeah, like a 10 people production like, team. I, was, I wasn't even on Not the production Not even including the actors. And, yeah, I wasn't and, on the production team, but they'd be like, I'd be in the office and be like, yo, oh, oh, yeah, Fozzy will like... Um, Find anyone. He'll, he'll, if, if he knows that like you have a maybe a good eye or he might just want a little perspective, like he'll bring in people just to be like, oh, like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Like so much thought and energy and effort went into the series. Like, gen- and I feel like you can really feel that sincerity coming off the screen, man. Like, um, and to, sh- to really like, uh, as a testament to it, People watch it 
in their living rooms as a family Mm -hmm. like they're not you know some people are watching on their ipad or on their phone there's a lot of people who like get together as a family it's an event it's like a nightly event that people have during normal and they've really come to look forward to it and i really understand why man because um first of all shaka omar's storytelling is beautiful yeah it's beautiful and then the production team really bringing to life behind him and around him um the 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 different stories and the different hadith and quran the vision Bro, beautiful. Does he write his own stuff? Yep. Like, is he yeah. the one? So writing? right after Ramadan, he starts for the next year. Yeah. Subhanallah. It takes a while. Yeah, it takes all a, the like, research. He does everything from literally going back to the books, yeah. getting the the do his his passion. We talk to him. His passion is research. Speaking Mashallah. is not his passion. Yeah. His passion is research. He would go make. He's a proper scholar. He's a right? prop. Mashallah. May Allah preserve him. Allah, I mean. The amount of work he's doing on top of all the activism he's doing and all the community work he's doing. He's a bookworm, and he yeah. loves that. He loves fi- his. He told me this. He's like, you give him, you give him something. He loves finding the holes and filling those holes. And and to the point of like, <clears throat> oh, what happens when you take someone who can do activism and you back that up with like real, like self work and 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 the studying and the knowledge behind it, mashallah, your impact can be amazing. And and I think that like one of the things that makes me really happy that it's Sheikh Umar that's putting this together is because I know he does the work, man. I know he does the work. I know that he's a community guy. He's not someone who's detached from. He has a local community. You can go any day to Valley Ranch after Asr and Homeboys sitting there reading with Quran, like kicking it. Like you can go. Um, Yo, don't you know, give out the secrets. Oh, my fault. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You see, he's going to be there. Inshallah, so. Like, you know, he's he's just a, he's like a guy from the community who participates. Yeah. And then obviously he's also serving the community. Then he also has all these different engagements and in talks and stuff like that all across the country on top of that he's constantly writing articles like one of the under bro check check, omar's articles are fantastic and they're very timely and they're very um their perspective is often very very uh like nuanced and and timely i already said timely but timely like they comes at the right time yeah um and then on top of that like he's has work with organizations like actually helping them whether it's getting set up or um trying to help them grow um whether it's like his fundraising stuff or actual development stuff like from an enemy perspective like how to set things up and what things to focus on so on and so forth. and then on top of that he's ma- he's uh you know putting together this ramadan series like to put in perspective he said he started working on it after ramadan last year it just we just finished wrapping <laughs> in january uh, in, in january like not that long ago and they're filming. still filming filming that means all of oh, his... Oh, no, no. I'm February, February. February, yeah. When did Ramadan start? Uh, m- March. Three days ago, brother. What are you talking oh, about? SubhanAllah, bro. Yo, what are you talking about? It's too long. <laughs> Yo, and, and then on top of that, like, they're still cutting some of the episodes. Yeah. Not all of them are done. Wow, SubhanAllah. Yeah, so they're it's working like... working around the clock. They're man, working around... Like, it's it's taking a year to put this together. Bro, tell me and Rahim are available. Inshallah, bro. Hey, Allahu Akbar. Hosey. Gotcha, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make sure you guys get, you guys get um, connected, inshallah. But I think this. a huge thing... I think, SubhanAllah, like... We see all the great things Sheikh Omar is doing. Yeah. Um, if you, he has a few interviews where he, he people ask him like, "How are you doing all this?" And he attests it to two things, and both of things are his mother, his dua from his mother, and he's doing it for her. So she passed her Hamilullah, and everything he does is for her sake. She, he's like, "I'm her Sadiq and wow. that's so beautiful because that also puts him in check. It's like if I do something out of my own ego. I'm doing this in the name of my mother and for the sake of Allah. It's like, well, it's, it's so beautiful when it comes, when you, again, when you come back to knowledge and stuff, it puts things into perspective and it puts you in balance and checks, inshallah. So like, yeah, don't I, ever, don't ever, one, if your mom's making dua for you, you're lucky, man. Oh, a thousand you percent. You are so lucky. A thousand percent. And this work takes a lot of effort, man. Like the shayuk that I really um, have been blessed to be able to see in close quarters um, and, and really have grown a lot of respect for are the ones who like bro it doesn't seem like they get tired mm. like the amount of things they do and like we get tired because we wake up half wake up for fudger we're <laughs> still asleep and then we go to work for a full day maybe we do one or two extracurricular activities and we go home and we knock out like and that's an exhausting day and it's valid like it is a lot but like they might have like some morning engagement 20 thousand texts in between trying to answer questions for people mm-hmm. and then they got to do uh you know they might have a full day of classes that they're teaching so then they're studying for those classes yeah. 
and then in between students assault them in the classroom in between you know with their regular questions so that's just their students that they have to put extra effort and time into um and then like you know that's a lot of time community members might you know come and ask some questions for them to answer and then they might have another class after and then they might have to travel that day so they'll go uh friday evening they'll go get there do an evening program wake up in the morning saturday do a morning program or afternoon program come back sunday night teach again uh you know saturday night teach again sunday morning and and, and just rinse and repeat and on top of that, having family obligations family fa- and, and being present for their families and their children and family love them Give, and cut, appreciate them let's cut them some slack man oh, so we gotta cut our scholars some slack yeah oh, mashallah, like I, I, how did you guys react when the well actually before we get into that is there any more behind the scenes uh, interesting stuff about the Yaqeen series um <clears throat> it's gonna the muslim community in america especially in the west has not seen anything like this yeah it, it it's, it's where where the thing is what Yakin is doing as Sheikh Omar has he's been attesting to within keeping with the bounds of Islam is trying to push that needle so that it's you're not just listening to someone on a desk where you're actually experiencing you're going through a whole story having actors and this is only the first step yeah. last year we did it with more b-roll yeah right yeah. we went through a story but not through one person now it's an actual like film like you, take Sheikh it, Omar, it's a film. There's a there's a whole film. short film behind it, yeah. and on top of that, Sheikh Omar is uh, these videos are supposed to be like 10, 12 minutes. And Sheikh Omar is going over because he wants to make sure that he does justice to every single section of um, the whether it's story or hadith or Quran. He wants to make sure that he it's very comprehensive. It's it's like real knowledge. It's not surface level. Yeah, it's, and his words, his sentences and words are usually jam packed. Mashallah, man. He, he has eloquence, and it's because of the research and yeah. writing that allows that eloquence. Mashallah. Let me tell. Ta- I'll tell you one more behind the scenes. Shakur, I'm sorry you're seeing this. Um, when we record these series, and he's doing his his part, after we're done with an episode, he asks for feedback from us. We're not scholars. Them, yeah. He's like, "Did you understand what I was saying?" So and if we say no, he's like, "Let's run it back." Subhanallah. Right? That's crazy. He edits right there. He's like, no, the goal is not for me to sound smart or to do the goal is to make the people understand. Mm-hmm. Right? To understand that Islam is is it's simple is as simple as we want it to be. Mm-hmm. Right? And understanding it's so perfect and beautiful in its way, where these are just words and Allah is putting them together. Mm-hmm. Right? And that just shows the Hassan he puts in. Yeah. And he always he's like, did I say that word wrong? Is that okay? Like I remember last year when he, when he was talking about Jannah, he was uh, I was sitting there. He's like, what fruit do you guys eat in Bangladesh? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I don't know. Do you guys have mangoes? I was like, yeah. I was like, is there anything specific? And he just like put it into he did off the bat. He was talking about Pakistan, India, and like, oh, if you you don't have these type of fruits in Jannah, these are even better, right? You can have these fruits, but know that in Jannah is going to taste even more this and this and that. I'm like, subhanAllah, like he takes feedback. And wallahi, like when, when I watch these series and when people are watching them, they're looking at them. They're like, mashallah, but like the background behind them, yeah. the amount of work that goes behind any, not just Yaqeen, any type of production. Like mashallah, like now, alhamdulillah, Yaqeen has put forth an, a new genre of Islamic uh, content. Right, yeah, it raised the, production the bar. Pu- yeah, it raised the bar, man. Across the Muslim world, like I still remember when, like, you would get real scratchy audio and really, <laughs> you know, really horrible MSA style. Like, you know, we're all trying to copy the Office in Cringy. our little yeah. bro, very and and to make it that that effortless looking, that um, how do you say relatable? Takes takes a lot of effort and work yeah. and Mail a lot of like. Team. It's the team running too. it back and running it back and running it back. No, mashallah, the team is fantastic. And, you know, I, I'm not someone who knows uh, Sheikh Omar. I have my whatever little stories with him that I've seen him over the years and stuff. Um, and he's affected my life personally, um, in, including my like journey with knowledge, alhamdulillah. Um, but it's really apparent from the people like um, him and people who have worked with him that like, mashallah, like, you can see the work. Even in some of the real like brief interactions you can see the work and the effort and the kindness that he kind of puts forth and we appreciate it sure. and, yeah. I, and i feel like um wallahu alam um it it seems that what he's trying to do is for the sake of allah and, and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it yeah. may allah subhanahu wa accept all, uh, yeah. whatever work from all of us yeah. um and may allah allow him to continue it yeah. right um yeah. because yes. at the end of the day like no one's perfect um but 
uh, what is it? Oh, man, there's a saying in Arabic. Basically, like whatever you do for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala lasts. Mm. And and I pray and hope that His project. Um, continues and that it lasts and it becomes a resource for generations. And yeah, I'm, all, I'm very curious how history is going to look back on him. I th- and I believe it will be very favorably. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter what history says. All the, only what yeah, Allah yeah. thinks and all what Allah says. Uh, yeah, b- but also no, yeah, how yeah. people view you yeah. is a uh, is uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. No, 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 it no, actually no. shows how Allah may view you. Rahim, you doing all right over there, brother? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because we're 15 minutes away from 4 a.m., which yeah. means the, the episode would drop, and we could react together on it. Oh, oh, is that when the new one drops? Yeah, he drops it at 4 a.m. Oh, so you were talking so, about the... Oh, so you do the reactions based on this day? Well, I don't know when I... I did you do that last did yesterday? Did you do episode... F- I which episode have you done? used to some pretty good production. No, 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 no relax. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> did you watch, did you react to yesterday's video? I, I loved the, the, the yeah, I think he wants to do that one. Yeah, that I heard good things about it. That's the only reason. Which one? The one the that third just dropped. One? Yes, the third one. The watch? fourth one. The fourth one. The fourth one's coming out today. No, they already dropped the fourth. Yeah. Wait, wait, go on YouTube. They already dropped the fourth. I watched the three. Yeah. Huh? Did you watch it? The third one was really good. Yeah. All of it's been. We watched it, we watched it like twice with his dad. It was really cute. Look at yeah, you, we. Google sir. Look, yeah, we, bro. Yeah, we. Oh, I was midway through that tour video between before you guys came. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> Not midway, so quarter. You've seen it too. Yeah. Oh, that's four. Yeah. Wait. Is that the one you were crying to? Yeah. Oh, valid. Why is this my? F- oh, this is when the the boy grew up a little. This is when the gr- boy grew up a little. Yeah. Wait, go down. This is, it, I'm confused. So this one's. This one's coming out. Yeah, yeah, number what five. What shaped my personality? <coughs> what Man, happened? not gonna lie, that's my forte. So <laughs> we can do number five. We can wait for it. I mean, I'm, I'm down for either. I think that's premieres in fifteen minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I don't mind if, either or. If you guys are okay, we can. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down to do this one because I feel like none of us have watched it. It'll be fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it'll be fun, guys. Yeah, we can do it together. You know, you know, it's so funny. Our our friends were talking about like when your friend shows you a show. And they're just like they like you guys are talking about Naruto. I was like, I never watched Naruto. And then you're like, we'll, we'll fix that. Inshallah. Like, like yo, we're like, oh, watch it. And then you're just looking. At, you see what happened there. You see what happened there. I'm, a, hor- I'm a horrible person to watch stuff with. <laughs> Either if I if I've never watched it before, I'm I'm likely falling asleep. And if I have watched it before, I'm looking at your reaction. And if you're not giving me the right reaction, I'm gonna stop the video and explain it to you. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm, you it's really bad. You are horrible to watch. A thousand percent. Because especially percent. the ones that fall asleep irritate me. Oh like, yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. not passionate about this, I'm not passionate about it. I'm not I'll be, I'll be, uh, my, some of my old roommates used to hate watching stuff with me. <laughs> I pass out immediately. I will pass out in the theater. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's really bad. Bro, it ruins the vibe. Hey, I'm a vibe ruiner. That's what, that's what listen, yeah. listen. I ruin vibes and I yap, brother. Like, I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Professional, what you call A it? professional, professional yapper. Yeah. Oh, How did you guys feel? Because, uh, alhamdulillah, I mean, you, you, you commended the, the podcast and being able to, to address that with Sheikh Uthman. Mm-hmm. Um, but how, how, how did you guys feel when that was knowing everything you know about the hard work that goes into Yaqeen and uh, the sincerity that they attempt Bro, to put it's, it you know, it's, Okay, yeah, I feel like you got a lot to say. I just want to say one thing. It's so funny because I'll be out in the wild and people will be like... I don't think I asked the question, but go ahead. <laughs> no, you did. You did. Because and and, you inferred something. Infer- and I'm going to answer I am, that. I am pl- you inferred, implied. I implied. You did imply you it. Inferred. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, look at that. See, I would have never... I need to start reading more, man. <laughs> mean words nah brother you're doing great I don't read um, and plus you put them together in a very beautiful way I think mashallah yo stop raising me up right now bro <laughs> mashallah <laughs> to, to answer your question about Yaqeen it's so funny people who aren't from here because like a lot of one of the things I love about living in Dallas is a lot of knowledge and the people of knowledge are humanized mm. they're just regular folk they're just you know Sheikh uh, Abdullah Duro is that massive in real life and he's funny and he will joke with you and, you know, Chef Omer, you're looking up at him like this, and you're like, you know, and you're like, wow, his skincare routine must be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, it's just regular folks. They're regular people, and, you know, they're, you know, they got their good and they got their bad. You know, Chef Nasser, um, I've never met somebody who's roasted me that hard in my entire life. Online really? and offline? It didn't matter where All I am. I am everything. Dude, he loves the Cowboys. Oh, once he we does. Were, once we were in class, and Abdul Nasser Jang that has a rule like don't ask him questions in the middle of his you know teaching. Yeah. But as he's talking, someone goes, "Go Cowboys!" He stops. He goes, 
Go Cowboys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's, that's his about. favorite student for the rest of class. <laughs> no, like, you know, they're, they're just people. Um, but, like, when you are out in the world and, like, you know, they're like, oh, you live in Dallas. Have you met Sheikh Omar? What do you, what do you think about this Yakin stuff? And I'm like, what are you talking about Yakin stuff? They're like, oh, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> have you heard about what that one guy said? You know, like, trying to, like, get something out of you. Everybody's trying to figure out, like, what the hell's going on out here. And because they're all watching these, like, reaction videos. Mm. Um, and, you know, all these, like, really odd things that people are saying um, about Yakin. And nobody has, like, read an article. Yeah. Or, or wa- just watch the videos, bro. Like, you and I, and I think, like, we have this very strong, like, criticism culture. Which, you know, whatever. I'm happy that, you know, we... Um, are being critically like having critical analysis of things that we watch but like don't just consume other people's critical analysis like i remember one of my friends who i love and he's very intelligent but i used to always get frustrated with him because um he wouldn't consume primary sources he would always um consume like the the critical analysis of what other people were saying about a thing especially in, in regards to islam and what that does is it gives you like a really uh false and inflated sense of like understanding of a subject right because you're like oh like i know that he went wrong here and here and here and technically like you know he's a mubtad it because of x y and z and Mm. bro you know every single one of this person's flaws you know what about what about the good stuff what if it was 95 percent good stuff and you know all the flaws and you think you understand that subject or you think you understand that thing or talk i think that like one of the things that you're talking about with the whole Uthman thing was like how many misconceptions did people have because they just didn't read the thing that everybody was talking about. Bro, that's one of my favorite features on Twitter these days. Like, when, or I don't know if they removed it. It was like, if you'd reshare something without reading it. Because you read a headline, you assumed what it was about. First of all, these headlines suck. Click they click. are, bro, a thousand percent. They, they're giving you a completely false impression of what's actually being said. Sometimes it's the opposite of the headline. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, we're in an attention economy, so people are gonna say and do whatever they need to to get views. That's like on a, you know, very negative view of people. Or um, on a more positive side, a lot of people have genuine grievances with some of the articles or things that people have said uh, from Yakin Institute. But bro, just read, <laughs> read what they're saying. Like Allah gave you um, eyes and a brain. See if there's a problem. See if it's something you even understand. Learn about the subject. Every time you um, you consume like the, the the critical analysis without understanding the primary resource, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're robbing yourself of an opportunity to learn. So you're saying it's valid to criticize, but it's invalid not to research your own criticisms and make sure that your criticisms are validated by knowledge that you've actually. I think you know, that taken. you can personally have whatever criticisms you want. I think, though, that, and, and this is on the flip side, because uh, I, I don't want to criticize the criticizers, but a lot of times they are not doing. I, I often have problems with the people who criticize because the lens that they're criticizing from seems very destructive. And it doesn't seem that they're adding anything to um, the culture or the conversation that's like necessarily meaningful. Sometimes they are. Sometimes it's someone who's genuinely knowledgeable and they have genuine concerns. And sometimes it's just they heard someone who heard someone who heard someone and they're repeating it and now it's become this thing that's unsubstantiated. Or um, they aren't rooted in community and they don't really understand. Um, they have no concept of like wisdom. And so they say things uh, not understanding the context that thing was written in or said in um, and they understand it wrong. And like oftentimes, like for example, like there's a lot of people who might see, oh, there's flaws in the Quran or the Hadith or whatever, and they'll bring up two Hadith next to each other, be like, these are contradictory. And it's like, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. Genuinely, you don't know what you're talking about. You go to any Shaykh and they will clear that up for you. Like the people who know and the people who not know are not the same. Mm. And I don't think that it's good for us to assume that we're equal to them. Um, because we feel like we got one up on them because we know their flaws or we know a certain flaw in a certain argument that someone made it's silly it's it's genuinely silly and you're not growing and you're not learning um if you want to go and criticize someone cool go do the work go do the work go read and go learn and understand what you're talking about and then if at that point you find a problem clear you did the work to get there like don't tell me my math problem is wrong and you don't understand pemdas <laughs> like bruh 
you're out here you know, <laughs> you're trying to add together things outside of the parentheses you're doing it in the wrong order it's like bro you it's think a very my, oddly specific example and i, love I just like i like i like logic <laughs> and i like i like math in how it's used in logic because mm-hmm. i think if people understood like basic geometry like how to put together a proof have you ever taken a logic class oh it's fantastic Oof. Oof, it's fantastic difficult. oh yeah it's hard Very but it makes your mind like straight yes it, it allows you to understand how to um put together an argument and put together um a clear thought deduce thoughts mm-hmm. yeah. and have criticize your own deductive reasoning is mm-hmm. what they'd call it right? yeah a thousand percent well what, what do you have to say to that because you were on the inside and you actually you don't work for your queen anymore oh uh, no i i took a uh, i took leave to study okay mashallah um it was it was my time it's it's mashallah. Mashallah. i mean some people could be looking at us and as, as i got criticized in the comments with the sheikh Othman video yeah we could be sounding like just some fanboys and how come maybe we are just uh biased in our opinion and view let me tell you this <clears throat> Taking everything outside, like I, my big thing about criticism is if you have a direct line, um, who said it? I think it was, I'll be honest, this is so funny. It's uh, Tom Holland said this. Oh, interesting. You know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm about to say, he said, Spider Man. He said, he said, if you have a problem with me, text me. Valid. If you don't, uh, if you don't have my number, you don't have a like. Don't. You don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a right to have a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you, oh, you, 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 don't, you don't know me well enough to have a problem with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, it's the same thing, right? If you have an opportunity to give Nasiha, our, our religion gives it. The thing is, is that, alhamdulillah, people learn, you know? Right? Alhamdulillah, yeah. going giving Nasiha privately is has a benefit to it. Yeah. But there's also like, when you give Nasiha, that person doesn't do it. Then, of course, we have that different things. But yeah. alhamdulillah, things happen. Mm. You know, people criticize your king all the time. Yeah. Um, and how you criticize it is only showing how much you know. Yeah. Um, some people have uh, vendettas against them and so on and so forth. But Do you I, think it's a matter of jealousy as well? Well, it, hey, can, well so, okay. <clears throat> to, to, to the counter argument to what he's saying would be that, because jealousy is a thing and I would want to address it, but I want to address the counter argument first. Is that, oh, these are people who are saying things publicly, so we should address them publicly. And sometimes that's true. But sometimes it didn't have to be you, mm. right? Like um, scholars are a community unto themselves in the sense that they have a responsibility to hold each other accountable. Um, and if you if you read uh, about the scholars of the past, like they constantly did that. And there was an adab to it. There's a way to do it. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, they, they can get a little spicy or whatever. But at the end of the day, like they have the knowledge to be able to correct themselves. And across time, the majority of them will like the truth will become apparent. Mm -hmm. right um i just think that like the person who is criticizing them um it's interesting like if you observe who they are and why they might be doing that like whether it's jealousy um whether it's just a lack of knowledge um whether it's they have a legitimate point and they felt this was the best way to do it and clear you know no problem um but sometimes like like he was saying like if you know him you could have texted him or you could have had a conversation on the side, or so on and so forth. I found a way to, found a way to give. And, and and sometimes maybe that's just not an option. And so mm-hmm. the only way to address it was publicly. Now after the fact, like how do you resolve that? What good came from this? Did you repair? Did you figure out a way to, you know, interact with this person? Like I think that uh, when you get criticized, it's, uh, ego comes into play for sure. It's difficult to hear. Um, and I think that, um, especially when you feel like you can't defend yourself, it's a bunch, it's thousands of random people. You're like, how do I even, for sure, these guys all in a room. And And, and, and so it's very hard to come to like a peaceful resolution or to get some sort of meaningful result out of it. Like I often think like, okay, you might've thought that this was a good idea, but what do you think is going to come from it? Like, so, you know, there's, for, for enjoying good and forbidding evil, there's Mm -hmm. rules to it. You can't just go out and just do that. If you are going to go and stop an evil that's going to have a comparable evil that comes because of you stop this evil or there's a greater evil, you're supposed to you're not supposed to do anything. Right? But if you know that oh by stop like you have to that means you have to think ahead, you have to understand your situation, you have to know the context. You kind of have to have a general understanding of what's going to happen next. Obviously, you can't always control things, but you should have some understanding. Meaning that like okay, if I'm going to correct this thing that I see as bad, um, I should know that by correcting it, I'm going to have the effect that I want, 
which is to make this thing or people or my community better. What result do you think? Like, okay, if I know that I call out homeboy in front of everybody, not only is that going to mess up our relationship, it's going to make him look down in the eyes of the people around us. And on top of that, um, he's going to feel bad and he might not correct that thing out of um, spite. Yeah, bro, you call me out in front of everybody, screw you. I don't want anything to do with you, and you're wrong. V- versus, like, if I pulled him aside, I was like, hey, man, like, this is not cool. And he might get upset, but now at least he has some time to process it. He might leave me for a little bit, and, you know, maybe we're not cool. Um, maybe because I said it in a harsh way or so on and so forth. And now he has the opportunity to whatever, do whatever. Or if I do it, to, if I, I take him aside, and I'm like, hey... You know, you're doing X, Y, and Z that is really good. And I appreciate the work that you're doing. But it might be that this thing that you're doing might be bad. Mm. Um, you know, do you think that maybe let's figure out, like, what do you think that we can do to f- get this figured out? And sure, he might still get upset, but he might be, okay, this person who's talking to me, who's giving me um, this, this here, or advice, or whatever, he loves me. Right? Like, he cares about me. And he's doing this out of care for me. Um, that makes it a lot easier for them t- to get a good result. So, like the way that you do something, you can't just say, "Oh, it's like as important I, I, as what you're doing." A thousand percent. So you can't just say, "Oh, I enjoyed good." Yeah. It's like, oh, and I forbade evil. Like, brother, no, you caused evil. <laughs> you're out here causing <laughs> fitting in the world for no reason. We it's did good like, through evil. Huh? Yeah. So what time? What time? Is it? One more. I think you just dropped. Guy, are you guys uh, hungry? I got mm. some Domino's pizza. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to plug Domino's. I don't care. Um, Delete that, brother. No, wait, is this? Is this new? What is? Whoa. Is this premiering? Ooh. Oh. Oh, this is the countdown. A minute Whoa. 50. Okay. That's pretty cool. No way. I can grab us some pizza, bro. No, no, no literally, no, like, call them. They, they gave it to me. Well, no, 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 no. Well, they didn't. I don't know who's that. Wait, sorry. That was wrong. Roots. Oh, okay. They had some leftovers. Mashallah. No, no, I'm saying mashallah. Well, no, no, mashallah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. If you're hungry, bro, if you're hungry, bring it no, up. I'm saying, like, we could, we could get some support going, watch the. So, who is this? I'll, I'll, I'll take a slice. I'm lactose intolerant, huh? Yeah, that, yeah, I'm going yeah. to take, take it easy. Bro, don't say that in the mic, bro. Is that haram? Do we. Do we is that like a, a word that it's. Can you bleep it out? Is <laughs> is lactose bleep. Is that is that one of the strike words? Is there going to be a comments? Let them. <laughs> I'm, I'm secure my, they're, they're, my, they're my roasting my... him because he has a, a physical intolerance or something that's <laughs> crazy <laughs> that should be flagged yo first of all Dang, you bro, nameless I roast you because of that yeah. I'm one of those I'm a but comment boys. under this own video. you, yeah, you yeah. can roast him for whatever you want I roast this man all the time you know I'm secretly I'm a uh, uh, I'm a closeted locked lactose intolerant man. Are you really? Yeah. You got the pills. I don't bro. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't drink milk. Dude, so, Can so, you have cheese? Yeah. Or yeah, yogurt? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That well, so fine. I'm not lactose intolerant. Though. No, I'm I mean, lactose insensitive. Maybe. Yeah. It's milk. Milk gets me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. might be the type of milk. Have you tried organic milk? Oh. No. Because one of my fr- uh, uh, Joan and Aksa, they're oh. like, they, uh, they when they get organic milk, sometimes it's the pesticides in them. Like in America, we're allergic to a lot of stuff that when you go back home or overseas, bro, I was eating everything in Morocco. And I, not only that, I was drinking way less water and it was hot and I wasn't getting dehydrated and I lost a ton of weight and everything. I was, I was looking great. I heard about that in Italy. That people that are gluten free, when they went to Italy and they got fresh bread, yeah. they could eat it. Mm. Well, so you know, gluten's interesting because. Do we want to watch? We can watch. Is oh. this premiere? Mm. Okay. Very nice, Michelle. Mm. Man, couldn't it have been a more perfect. Is literally everything we were talking about. Mm. Subhanallah. Why'd you laugh in the middle there about the, so, the nature versus nurture? <clears throat> because um, one of the first. Did you tell him that? No, no, one of the first, um, um, so my background is in mental health. One of our first, like, lessons that we learned in, in my master's was, is it nurture or nature, nurture versus nature? I went through the whole thing, and the reality of the fact is, now psychology is saying is nurture and nature. Yeah. Right? And that's what Sheikh Omar was saying. So, like, I'm telling you, man, mashallah, he does his research, mm. right? Why this, I feel, I was, like, laughing because I was like, I don't think they could have been more perfect because this is my this is my forte like personalities right i get asked all the time right this is like you know is it me am i the problem you know am i the drama now like that type of <laughs> stuff right 
But Wallahi, like, he put it in exactly like Islam has was Islam is a mechanism where you can, where if you implement it correctly, it's transformative. Islam is transformative. Meaning the qualities, like he mentioned, the qualities you have may seem negative. Perfect example of what I meant Right? He was known for his qualities of being, you know, stern and doing all that stuff. Right? But when he became Muslim, not only did he gain a soft heart, he took those good qualities and brought it over and used those bad qualities to put him in check. It's like, I don't want to become that. Right? But as Muslim born, being born Muslims and having this, you know, understanding the qadr of Allah, right? Am I, is my personality is, you know, is it going to affect this, this, this? What Islam teaches us, and you'll see this where if you go to therapy and you have like, you know, anxiety, depression, if you're dealing with like introversion and like extreme introversion, extreme extroversion where you get burnt out, you know, people pleasing, you all this stuff, you're trying to learn how to cope with it and live your life. What Islam teaches us is that it's so beautiful. Like, like when I was th- doing my master's, made me realize how much Islam is perfect, how much more I love Islam. But Islam teaches us that our anything that's in our life, good or bad, has a good outcome depending on how we use it. If I'm a good speaker, I can become a person that speaks ill speaks unjust, speaks harm, but I can be someone who speaks elo- eloquently, speaks about Islam, bring people closer to Islam, right? It's a double-edged sword. Our personalities, everything we have is a double-edged sword. And how we use them is the attest of our faith. Meaning, when, we go, when we're talking about activism and stuff, where it bring what is going to ground us, and that is our faith, same thing when it comes to your personality, Right? How you use an introversion. If you're a bookworm and so on and so on, like, you know, there's different types of character. You can be an extrovert and introvert. Like, w- what psychology teaches us now is that not everything's black and white. It's a spectrum, mm-hmm. right? You can be something of little, something of little of that, right? Something I learned when I first moved to Dallas was I have a social battery. I never knew I did, right? I was always everywhere, alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, I realized, like, man, I got burnt out. And, <clears throat> alhamdulillah, like, I felt like, you know, I'm still, I think I'm an extrovert, but I love my alone time. Um, that's another whole mm-hmm. conversation. Like our generation, especially first generation um, immigrants don't understand the how to have alone time and the benefits of it. We always need someone around. Right? We always need someone to please or show something off to. But like, it's so beautiful to be with yourself because when you're with yourself, you have the ability to have these uncomfortable thoughts yeah. and how you the thought process is how you like go through this thoughts like it's, you're having an anxious thought we're talking about marriage right it's like oh like i hit up this girl or like i'm trying to talk her up and so on and so forth like you're trying to do it the right way but you don't know if she's like down for it right like i'll oh, give me your ball's number type stuff right <laughs> and like you're like have this anxious thought you're up all night you're like you know i'm not good enough but the thing is how you were taught to think like we mentioned is is big and I'll, I'll i'll end this and i'll give it back to khalid and to you if you have any thoughts but like i was um during covid um we were a little reckless back in new york uh but not a reckless in a bad way it's just like we would just go to the same two people's houses right like all the friends would gather at either be at their house or this one friend's house mm. so this one friend's house was my my mom's best friend and also my close friend Right, it was in Brooklyn. They had like two apartments next to each other, and we just hang out, you know, gup shop all night and all that stuff. So we went. It was like me, my brother, my sister, and you know, all of our friends because we all grew up together. And um, we were hanging out like to like three a.m., four a.m. And then my mom's calling us. We're like, "Oh, come home. You know, I can't sleep." Yada yada yada. And we're like, "Just, just chill. We're at, like, you know, we're at your best friend's house. You know where we are." And then we get home, and she she yells at us. She's like. I couldn't sleep, da, 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 da. and I'm like, not in a mean way. She was just like, "Come on, like, I couldn't sleep." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I jokingly said, "Is like, either, you know, why you're so anxious is because you don't trust the way you raised us, all right?" And then she about to smack me, but she's like, "She's like, I'm not dealing with this right now." <laughs> but reality, the fact is, it's true, right? How your te- how your parents teach you to this, the core values that you have 
are taught, right? How, te- how your family and your surroundings teach you how to have a thought process in a positive way it shapes you as a person, right? Why are CEOs known as psychopaths? Like if they were literally want a wrong path, they'll be a psychopath. Like they have the same traits as a psychopath, mm-hmm. right? And you have to be a little narcissist to be a CEO, right? All these traits and stuff, but it's just your thought process and how you can do things is how the outcome comes your personality right like you have it everyone is going to have a situation right Mm -hmm. everyone's going to face you know a trial and tribulation how you put yourself through it and your thought process through it is the outcome you're going to come you know when we talk was like when we were talking about the the it's either this or that the two extremes is because of our thought process meaning if someone let's say perfect example we use gaza as an example Right, when you see the atrocities that are happening there for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, may Allah have mercy on them, may Allah them be shaheeds. I mean, I mean, two, but what are the two conversations you're having? Having either hopelessness or having shukr, having gratitude. Right, how do we get to those two points? Two they're very opposite points. It's because our thought process is, is that you know, we see these atrocities, this injustice, right? We feel the pain, there's anger with it. The shift is right here where it's like, what does Allah, is this the decree of Allah, right? How much do we trust in Allah, having tawakkul in Allah? Or, no, I'm sorry, but like having anger in Allah, <coughs> right? It can go to that where it's like, I'm angry, now I become hopeless. But if I understand Allah, like I have tawakkul in Allah, yeah. khair, what's the next thing? What can I do, right? I'm living here in New York, yeah, in America, you know, the government wants to give billions of dollars to Israel. What can I do? The, you know, they don't want to listen to us. What can I do? What are, what are my voting rights? What's the next step for me to show that I I care and can do something? But internally, as Muslims, what can we do? And this is where shukr comes from. Where Allah lets, we see the silver lining, right? In the end of the day, how we think Islamically and through knowledge and through experiences is what shapes one of our personalities, but makes our, our journey of transformative, being very transformative and you know, achieving Hassan, yeah. right? In the end of the day, subhanAllah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, sorry for my rant, but I, oh. I think that no, why I love this episode now, I was smiling the whole time. I was like, this is my forte. I'm going to I'm gonna keep talking about this, subhanAllah. Yeah. That was a beautiful episode, man, genuinely. Um, and I agree with basically everything that you were saying. Um, there was a line that Sheikh Omar said. <clears throat> he said that when your traits are governed by taqwa, mm. right? Like, that is the thing that is going to be the distinguisher. Like, regardless of how you were raised and what qualities Allah SWT gave you, um, when you govern them with taqwa, like, you'll end up in a good way. And eventually, like, by going through that process, like, you, you know, you tame them towards Allah SWT and, and for the cause of Islam. And then you can start reaching toward those qualities that you want to, like, kind of um, bring in within yourself. Um, and that's a process. And it's like, we can, we can grow the the essential and amazing things about the amazing thing about being a, a human being why the creation of adam was so special was that he had the ability to learn and grow um and it's the only thing that distinguishes us i mean free will and so on and so forth but that ability to transform um that ability to move forward regardless of where we came from in a single moment you know we can have an epiphany or we can have a thought or we can move towards like i don't want to say angelic actions but like righteous and towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like ihsan. ihsan yeah um and in the same way like we can go the opposite way as well right like we always have that choice i i think what i appreciated about this episode especially um was just illustrating that choice so beautifully mm. Yeah, I was, I was, I was smiling, and I was like, man, it was really making me think. Especially some of those first scenes, talking about like, you know, I've met so many people who you guys have heard of the term like unmasked. Yeah. No. Unmasked is like this concept where people who feel as if they don't have a community and they felt very isolated from the masjid and, and as if they were kicked out from the masjid and so on and so forth. And a lot of that had to do with their initial experiences within a masjid, whether. You know, they were discriminated against or maybe they went to madrasa like uh, Islamic school and, you know, they were hit or they were, you know, treated badly or, you know, they I'll had really... I'll put myself under that category. A, a thousand percent. There's a lot of people who, when they walk into a masjid or like an openly Islamic space, 
They feel very uncomfortable. PTSD. Yeah. A almost, thousand percent. Almost like they get a panic. They, 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 they genuinely don't feel comfortable. And it was interesting because um, he, but he mentioned how it's your first few experiences. You know how long it took me to get over that? It took me, I think, two years it's of just, just forcing myself to go to the master again. Uh, do you guys actually have any plugs you'd like to put? Uh, big shout out to my parents. Um, Wallahi, if it wasn't for them, well, first, Allah. And if it wasn't the work they put in is for putting, instilling these values of community and Islam within me, my siblings, um, I wouldn't be where I am today, having the connections, alhamdulillah, being able to study on right in the way i am it's all one dua for my dua for my mom the work my dad put in taking us to all these events taking him everywhere meetings and so i remember growing up like going all these meetings and meetings i was like bro why are you taking me here now i'm like now i'm knowing like hey let's not waste an hour talking about something useless if if it takes more than 15 minutes to talk about it can be an email (laughs) right like i was supposed to have a meeting it was like hey someone's trying to set up a meeting for some updates i'm like here are the updates it doesn't need to be a call, right? Uh, but alhamdulillah, it's because of the work my parents put in and their dua and, of course, of their parents and so on and so forth. So just shout out to my parents and my, my family. Uh, shout out to uh, my parents as well. May Allah have mercy on them and my family. May Allah forgive them. Everybody say ameen. ameen. Um, shout out to Sheikh Hanif, my childhood imam, um, in his masjid, Masjid Fatima al-Zahra in uh, California in... Dang, I don't remember exactly where. San Diego? No, no? he's in he's in LA, but like uh, the I don't remember I don't remember the city. But uh, Masjid Fatima Al Zahra, he's doing amazing work out there. He has a Quran school out there. Uh, please support that. Um, shout out to um, all of my teachers, all of the Masjid. Actually, shout out to the Masjid uncle. Amen. Shout out to the Masjid uncles. Amen. Yo, uh, the ones that are doing God's work, may Allah forgive them and grant them everything good in this life Amen. and hereafter. Amen. And the ones that are pushing people away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reform them and give them a change of heart Amen. and forgive them too because there's a lot of forgiveness. Um, <laughs> uh, specifically, uh, Uncle Tariq, um, Brother Yusuf, um, and my teachers, um, like I said, Sheikh Hanif, Sheikh Abu Nasser, um, Sheikh Miki Il, Mufti Kamani, and uh Usad um Usad Umair. And I, I like uh, how you guys are giving little Oscar speeches here. Go ahead. Oh, oh you fault. saw mine and then you yeah. see his, bro? MashaAllah. My fault. My fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean you said shout outs. Um beyond that, I don't I don't I'm just some guy I don't really do. I anything. thought you guys were gonna plug your Instagram. No, 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 no I'm no, gonna no. I'll plug I'll, I I have a small blog. Your um, blog, okay. That uh there's not much going on there, but I do write there occasionally. It's mostly bad poetry and odd musings about the world uh what the night brews dot com. Mm. um dot com. and yeah that's pretty much it very nice um, very nice it's it's not much don't expect much but um thank you so much for having us wallahi genuinely oh, really appreciate it i love the conversations thank you for letting us yap yeah, yeah, yeah for real <laughs> and and and, and and yapping with us you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fellow yappers you that, that was, united we yap yeah. i'll give a shout out too uh Rahim, Rahim's uh, actually very sick right now. He has oh, a he has a fever and he, he came he came out and as you could tell it's it's not an easy job to do what no. he's doing. Three so, hours, thank you so Jeez, much, Rahim, for that man. For anyone that knows, Rahim, one of the best videographers Here. in Dallas. Allah put his plug. Yes, sir. Put his John plug. that imagery, right? Is there any yeah. uh, hire him? Please. Yeah. Who? Hire his brother. Me? No him. Yeah, him. Uh, uh-huh. You do what? Oh, do you have any personal plug? No, no, it's, uh, this <laughs> one is a pretty good one. Oh, valid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Guys, make sure oh, this is on uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, follow at columninstitute.com, sign up, uh, <laughs> because or sign up for the column academy. Uh, there are uh, Cullum Institute is having their 70 applications right now. Uh, sign up, you won't regret it. Be in the Allah, take a step towards knowledge. And inshallah, Allah SWT will take several steps towards you and mm. put it in your life. Mm. Even if it's not through Qalam, uh, through another avenue or sign up for Qalam Academy. Uh, absolutely fantastic classes. They're a lot simpler. They're in the evening. They're easy to do. Um, make a commitment that even if you cannot become a scholar or an alim or whatever, that you can personally grow. Mm. It's the only thing that Allah SWT, it's the main thing that Allah SWT honored us with. So allow us to uh, learn and grow. 
So, uh, study at Cullum Institute. Uh, <laughs> and I promise you guys, this guy isn't even sponsored. This is from his heart, mashallah. Allah. So. Oh, yeah. No, no, please. Uh, yeah. Don't get us started, that. please. Not Ali. I just, I just have a lot of love. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mahayman Ali, Khaled Nur Hassan, Rahim. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for listening to the Unsaudi Podcast.